Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Anthony and Red's Top 10. I am Red the Fox, and I am Anthony Gamer, and in today's episode, we're going to discuss our Top 10 Magnavox Odyssey 2 games. In our previous episodes there, we had been talking about some of the third-party game companies uh, that made games for the Atari 2600, but we kind of decided it'd be a good idea there to take a little break from that. And so today we're going to talk about the uh, Magnavox Odyssey 2 games that we like. That's right. Uh, we are probably going to branch off to into some other areas, talking about music, uh, movies, whatever. So I'm kind of thinking about changing this to make it kind of a slice of life kind of thing. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section below. Right, you are Anthony. And again, I think the people that watch the videos are going to really appreciate the fact that we're talking about uh, other stuff other than just about Atari games and games, period. So just be on the lookout for some other stuff that's coming up soon there. Okay, so like I said, today we're going to be talking about the Magnavox Odyssey 2 and our top 10 games uh, from that system. Now, for those of you not to know, the Magnavox Odyssey 2 was released in the United States in September of 1978. That's correct. And while, before it was discontinued... Uh, in March of 1984, it did sell quite well. Um, actually, it was in third place for consoles of that time, uh, just behind the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision. Yep. In other words, it did outsell the ColecoVision. So take that, uh, you ColecoVision uh, fanatics there. In my opinion, one of its biggest selling points and probably what made it one of the most successful consoles of its time was the fact that it had a keyboard built into it. Yeah, like, uh, for instance, if you wanted to play some of the medutainment games there on the Atari 2600, you had to get that uh, keyboard controller, and the Intellivision had a built-in uh, keypad, and so did the ColecoVision, but when you looked at the uh, Magnavox Odyssey 2 and it had uh, that keyboard right there on the console, I mean a full keyboard, uh, it kind of let you know that there were going to be some edutainment games there. So I think that's why some parents uh, did purchase it as opposed to some of the other systems. Right you are, Red. Now, we're not here to talk about the Magnavox Odyssey 2 as much as we're here to talk about the games. Now, we had a little bit of a hard time uh, making this video and deciding which games to put in and which ones to take out because this is one of those game systems that has a lot of hidden gems. And if you dig deep, you're going to find a lot of cool games. But what we decided to do was to uh, discuss games that were released only for the Magnavox Odyssey 2. Yeah, so we're not going to be talking about Demon Attack or Atlantis or some of them very few games that had been released by third-party people. Most of these here are in-house games. So without further ado, let's get into the games. Okay, at the number 10 spot there, we have Speedway. This was on a cart that had three separate games on it. Speedway, Spinout, and Cryptologic. In this one, you're driving down the street and you are simply trying to uh, race against the clock and not run into the cars on the way. So if you can make the whole two minutes, uh, you try to get as high of a score as possible. Pretty simple, but yet can be quite challenging. Next up at the number 9 spot, we have Showdown in 2100 AD, and in some parts of the world it's known as Gunfighter. In this game, you and a friend or the computer are basically trying to shoot each other as many times as possible. Uh, pretty fun game, I actually. Um, you draw, shoot, you can reload the gun, uh, and the bullets ricochet all over the place. It's really a fun game honestly. Uh, it's a lot like uh, Atari 2600 Outlaw, but with one difference. It's got AI, and the AI on this is no joke. So this is definitely a hidden gem to try out. Next up there we have Blackjack. Now this one you utilize the keyboard uh, to tell them if you want to hit, stay, double down, and uh, split and all that good stuff. So it's basically just Blackjack. After so long they shuffle the cards and yeah, what can I say? Anthony likes this one because he's too afraid to play Blackjack in real life. Hey! I'll have you know that the reason I don't do play it in real life is because I'm not really all that good at gambling, so I figured why 
uh, do something that I'm not good at. Yeah, and it does cost you money, but anyway, so what's our next game? Well, next game on our list is Killer Bees. This was actually one of the games that was voice enhanced. You could get uh, the special uh, modular or add-on that would have actual speech in the game, but you can play it at least an emulation without it. So, the story with this one is the Beebots from the insect civilization of BEM are invading the Earth, protected by swarms of killer bees, and it's up to a swarm of white bees to stop them. The player controls the white bee swarm, trying to kill the Beebots by flying over them and stinging them. The longer the swarm flies over a Beebot, the slower it moves, until it finally stops and dies. When a Beebot dies, a grave marker will be raised in its place, making the movement of the remaining Beebots more difficult. The red bee bots move clockwise, the blue ones move counterclockwise. Now they're protected by these bad killer bees. Now every time you kill a bee bot, you are able to uh, zap them uh, and get rid of them. But if they get you too many times, they'll wipe out your swarm and you die. So really a fast paced game, lots and lots of fun. One that I hadn't discovered until here recently, but I uh, really enjoy it. All right, the next game there is another one we hadn't discovered until real recently, and that is Monkey Shines. Now, in this game, you're playing tag with a bunch of monkeys. Yeah, it's as screwy as it sounds. So what you're doing is you're running around in this maze. You're trying to tag the monkey and avoid getting tagged back. Uh, you can jump around and climb around on all these uh, different platforms, and uh, the game ends when the uh, person... It, when both people have been eliminated by the monkeys. Now you can play it by yourself like we were doing and uh, here so what you're doing is you're just kind of uh, like I said you're grabbing you tag the monkey then you throw the monkey uh, I guess it's better than spanking it but hey sorry but anyway so it's a pretty fun game uh, one again that we just discovered here recently uh, there's lots of different options to the game you can change the maze around you can make the monkeys faster you can make the platforms invisible there's all kinds of great options in this game that make the gameplay uh, you know one that you're going to return to again and again in our next uh, game on the list is Electronic Table Soccer. It's kind of similar to more like foosball than anything else, uh, which is kind of neat because I've always wanted a foosball table. Uh, but as opposed to, but instead, you know, this is about the closest you're going to get unless you want to spend some big bucks on one. So uh, relatively easy to control, and I think you pretty much get the gist of what the game is. Uh, most of the sports games that were made for this system aren't that great. Honestly, they're they're really just not. And this has to be the best of uh, those limited number of sports games that were made for uh, this game system. Next up, we have a game that was only released in Brazil, as Brazil was one of the countries that the Magnavox Odyssey 2 was a big hit and this is clay pigeon and this game you are doing what it sounds like you are shooting at clay pigeons you have two shots per row and after these two shots you got to reload the gun by putting it down uh, your character can be moved left and right and but if you exceed the mark he falls to the ground uh, now you get extra points for shooting ducks and 100 points for shooting eagles and five points for each plate, but be careful uh, because sometimes the ducks will drop bombs on you. Um, and if you feel to shoot the minimum number of plates, an eagle will appear and attack you. So, yeah, it's a really bizarre game, but it's really a lot of fun, and it's kind of a shame we didn't get it released here uh, in the United States. Okay, at the number three spot, we have KC Munchkin. Uh, this game is a maze-type game where you're going around eating these pellets, and if you get the green ones, you can come back and uh, eat those bad creatures, whatever the heck them things are, that are coming after you. Now, many of you know the story to how uh, uh, Magnavox or Phillips got sued by Atari, and then uh, they lost, but then on... Um, uh, 
appeal. They ended up, you know, losing. So, yeah. It, but overall, it's a really fun game, regardless of the controversy that it caused, at least in our opinion. It's uh, one of our all-time favorite uh, Magnavox Odyssey games and probably one of our all-time favorite games, period. Okay, at the number two spot, we have the sequel, Casey's Crazy Chase. In this one, you once again take on the role of Casey Munchkin, and you are chasing one end of a dreaded dratapillar, and the other end is chasing you, and so are the dratapillar's dreadful drats. So what you have to do is eat him from behind until you take him out. Uh, this one, I think they intentionally made it as different as possible to not get sued again. Uh, this also has speech that is played through uh, the add-on, but you can enjoy the game without it. And believe me, we, we really do. This is such a fun maze game and very unique from other maze games from this that time period, which, again, I think was the whole idea. And uh, as no surprise to anybody, at the number one spot, we have Pickaxe Pete. Now, in this platformer game, you take on the role of Pickaxe Pete, who is in the Misty Mountain Mine, trying to strike it rich. Uh, the player controls Pickaxe Pete uh, in this platform mine. Three doors leading to deeper parts of the mine are displayed, and from them, gold-bearing rocks will burst in random intervals. Pete must strike the rocks with his pick, which will break... Uh, every one in a while. Uh, when it happens, Pete must avoid. When it happens, Pete must avoid the falling rocks by jumping over or crawling under them. Uh, basically, you're trying to get a key though to get out the doors, and that's the only way you can get out. Uh, and after a while, your pickaxe is destroyed. But then, when two rocks collide, you get a new pick. So basically, it's about getting points. So you earn one point for each rock evaded, three points for each piece of gold struck with a pick, five points for getting a new pick, 10 points for getting a key, and 20 points for going through a door with a key. Uh, this is really a game that stood out amongst all the other games for this system, and you know, we just had so much fun playing this, and that is why this is our number one choice. Well, that brings this episode of Anthony and Red's Top 10 to a close. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let us know by giving us a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when we upload any new episodes. Yeah, that's correct, and don't forget to connect with us on all our social media platforms. Check out our Patreon page, and head over to our Teespring store so you can get some really cool Classic Gamer 74 gear. Uh, it'll help the channel and to make you look cool at the same time. So as for what we're going to do in our next episode, well, you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, we're going to try to surprise you every time, so uh, just have to be on the lookout for the next episode. So until next time, I am Red the Fox, and I am Anthony Gamer, and we will see you all in our next episode of Anthony and Red's Top 10. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.